ان الحمد لله وحده والصلاه والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وبعد الله صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد ريكوردنج ان بروجريس اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم all praise be to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his choicest and countless blessings and bounties be upon the prophet peace be upon him allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed the whole humanity with different sorts of blessings and bounties and it's not only in this planet we see the bounties and blessings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala entire universe is replete with the blessings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all these blessings and bounties all these favors of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it reflects the richness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how rich allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is as we know that presently there are almost 7.8 billion people living on the planet and this planet our earth it is just one single dot when we compare this to the rest of the universe it doesn't amount even to be a dot a single dot and when we reflect when we contemplate upon this planet how much allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed it with many a favors tremendous amount of blessings and bounties it is just one single dot and when we contemplate upon the entire universe specifically with our modern day technological tools we realize how much how tremendously allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has repleted this universe with the with the different favors blessings and bounties that's what al ghani stands for al ghani is a beautiful name of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we are talking about the richness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al ghani one of the attribute of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala among the 99 names and attributes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al ghani the all self sufficient the immensely rich and tremendously rich the rich where there is no any potential threat of being poor allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rich in all his actions in his doings in his essence in his attributes in his names so this richness is reflected everywhere in this universe allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rich in a sense that he created each and everything and there is nothing of our own we are all dependent beings and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave everything to us each and every single bit of this universe is a creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hadha khalqullah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran this entire universe along with all its stuff and different products and substances hadha khalqullah this is creation of allah you show me what those whom you supplicate whom you associate part of beside allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what they have cried created what they have made even allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that there is no one who created every, anything la yakhluquna dhubaba inna alladhina tad'una min dunillah indeed those whom you invoke to beside allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whom you supplicate to beside allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la yakhluquna dhubaba they are not able to create even one single house fly not to talk about creation of house fly when yaslubhum dhubab shay'a if the fly comes and it takes some of the food from them or anything from them la yastanqiduhu minhu they cannot retrieve it back they are so much dependent on allah they are so much helpless that they are not able to retrieve what the fly has taken from them dharf at-talib wal madrub how weaker is the one who supplicates and how weaker is the one who is being supplicated to so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rich and his richness knows no bounds there are many people in dunya they are they are rich but not it's not necessarily that those who are rich they can retain their richness all through the life many are rich become the poor many are poor become the rich and this 
this life cycle moves on and there's no certainty with anyone but as far as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is concerned as I said before that it is Allah who blesses us with each and everything whatever we owe, whatever we possess is all given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the, there's no one beside him so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Ghani and Al-Ghani the all self-sufficient and he's not in need of his creation. He's, depend, he's not dependent of his creation, rather he's independent of his creation. He does not stand in need of anyone at all, while all the creation is in need of him. As far as Al-Ghani is concerned, this attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala occurs in the Quran 18 times. And there are many places, as I said, uh, there are almost 18 places in the Quran where the word Al-Ghani has been mentioned. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rich in his essence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is absolutely and completely rich. And there is no any flaw, there is no any defect that occurs to his supreme attributes and names. In any way, in any form, at any point of time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we know that his essence, his attributes are the part of his essence. Just as he is creator, the all-powerful, the sustainer, and the one who acts in a good manner, he does not need anyone in any way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-ghani, is who, in, who possess the treasures of the heavens and the earth, and the treasures of the world and the hereafter, and the one who enriches all his creation. As far as uh, this attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is concerned, that is uh, Al-Ghani, Al-Ghani has different lexical meaning. Al-Ghani, its root word is Ghina. Its root word is Al-Ghina. And uh, Ghina is from the root word Ghain, Noon, Alif and Hamza, Ghina. Ghina means richness. Ghina also means independence. The one who is not dependent on others. And the ghina is used to refer to the concept of independence because of being self-sufficient. And which is opposite to faqr. Faqr and ghina, they are two opposite concepts. Faqr means poverty, pauperism. If a person is poor, we call him in Arabic faqir. Means the one who is deprived of everything. That is known as faqir. Its plural is Fuqara. And Ghina is the root word of Ghani, which means immensely rich, which is opposite to Fakr. So Fakr and Ghina, they are two states, two opposite states. If a person is in a state of Fakr, it means that he is deprived of Ghina. If a person is in a state of Ghina, in a state of richness, it means that he is not poor. They are two opposite things. If one exists, other one has to be absent. Other one has to be out of the sight, out, out of the existence. So both cannot exist together. As day and night, they are two opposite things. It's deadly impossible that we can have the night and the day together. White and black, they are two opposite colors. It's not possible that we can have white and black together, giving it its full shade at the same time. So Ghila and Fakr, they are two different concepts. And Fakr, as I said, means when a person is de de deprived of everything. And as there are different forms of the Fakr, Fakr in it is material sense, in it is uh, worldly sense, when a person is not having the wealth. Fakr also means the one who is, who is, who is having the deficiency of rational capabilities. Intellectual deficit, intellectual pau pauperism, that's also fakr. And likewise, al ghina or al ghani is the one who is having the worldly possessions or positions. And at the same time, it also refers to al ghani is the one who, is be who has been blessed with the mental capabilities. And fakir is used to describe a poor person. And in reality, no one is in absence of need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, no one 
in absence of need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And everyone depends on one another except Him. And when we see the, the way Allah has created us, we all un, undoubtedly and definitely we are dependent on one another, in one case or the other case. Our level of dependence varies from person to person. But Allah has structured this world, Allah has structured our, so, our society, our, our social structure has been created in such a way that we are dependent on one another. So we cannot claim to be rich in, in essence, in, in, uh, in a fundament or in principle, we cannot claim to be the rich. Because rich is the one who is sufficient in all aspects. The exact meaning of rich. Who is self-sufficient in all aspects, in all domains, in all spheres. On the other hand, in our, in our life of dunya, we may have, we may have richness in some aspects, but not possibly that we may, we are rich in all aspects. So al ghani is the only one who truly transcends all needs and is completely satisfied and the one upon whose wealth, riches and blessings all others depend. What's of our own? What we, what we created of our own? What we brought into existence of our own? When we reflect, we should not be misled by the conception that is a human mind, is a, scientific, is a scientific revolution that brought many things together. It's actually we could explore the attributes and qualities or the characteristics of the objects. Then we just rearrange these characteristics. So the, 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 in absence of these characteristics, we cannot do anything. All our material advancement, all our technological advancement is only possible when the stuff, when the of substances created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possess certain characteristics. What man did? It discovered these characteristics and put them into proper usage. It arranged them in such a way so that they are more and more beneficial for us. But the question here again is who gave us the mental capability to put all these things together? Why the animals, millions and billions of animals could not do this? Why the millions and billions and trillions of the birds could not do this? Because they are not blessed with the mental and rational capabilities. And who blessed us with these rational capabilities? If one single element is taken out of the human being, that is a human capability, reason, rational capability. If this one single element is taken out of the human being, this rational capability, what remains there? A lump of clay. What remains there? A two-legged creature. With no essence, with no significance. What attaches to our significance, what adds to our significance is our mental capability. It's not just we are known as homo sapiens, man capable of thinking. Yes, we are truly homo sapiens in a sense that Allah has blessed us with this mental capability. And this mental capability enabled us to find out the different characteristics of the substances and different properties of the substances. Then we could rearrange them. We could harness these characteristics or these properties. We could utilize them in a proper way. So that it could, be, it could be more and more beneficial for us in dunya. It could, it could be more and more beneficial for us to make the life more comfortable. But the question, the basic and absolute question is, the fundamental question is, do we possess anything of our own? Nothing. We possess only helplessness, which I always refer to. What's our own essence is helplessness, our weakness, our dependence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al ghani He is rich in its fullest form and in its fullest meaning. Who doesn't need anyone else. Without all the khalq, He is still Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kulla yawmin huwa fi Every day He has his, his own affairs to do. I always say when we compare this planet to the rest of the universe, it doesn't amount to be even one single tiny dot. One single tiny dot. And then on this planet, a handful of people, when we compare the whole human population to the rest of the planet, it doesn't amount to be one single dot itself. That shows our insignificance. But still, the greatness of Allah, the grandeur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
honors us, respects us. Indeed, we have honored the son of Adam, peace be upon him. We have honored the son of Adam so that we could recognize the favors, the bounties, and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all around us. We are being flooded. This planet has been flooded by the bounties and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But for whom? It's only for the one who has the eyes to see, not these two buttons or these two torches, which makes us to observe the things. Now the eyes are capable of having the true vision, true acumen, so that we can see the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever we need in our life, Allah has enabled everything for us. That is the true richness. As far as Al-Ghani is concerned, it has been derived from the root word Ghain Noon Ya and there are four fundamental meanings of al ghina in Arabic. There are four fundamental, me fundamental meanings for basing an original meaning of al ghina which is a root word of the al ghani The first meaning is to be self-sufficient. If you, if you see, if you ponder ponder over the fact that the whole humanity always self-sufficient? Definitely not. For our physical existence, for our physical survival, we need the water, we need the air, we need the sunlight. Who arranges this? Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But how easily we forget about it. How easily we overlook and we neglect the blessings and bounties of Allah, which are fundamental for our survival. A person is getting every day hundred every month he's getting hundred thousand dollar in his account. And he doesn't know who sends it. And out of this hundred thousand dollar, a person fulfills all his needs, all the needs of the family, all the needs of the children, ensures all the luxurious life, but he doesn't bother to see who sends this hundred thousand dollar every month to him. So won't it be counted as thanklessness on his part? To be ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be ungrateful to the one who sends his hundred thousand dollar every month to his account. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he arranged the oxygen to us. Scientists are trying their best to find one single dot in this whole cosmos where the oxygen is available. They are thinking about set, settling the human beings on the, on the moon. But the problem is that of the oxygen. But who provided this oxygen in, in this tremendous amount? Just only thing they have to inhale, it's there. Allah is Ghani, He is rich. During this pandemic, we could understand and realize the importance of the oxygen. Hospitals, they ran short of the oxygen. And the oxygen concentrated companies, they got the huge orders which they could not fulfill. One single this pandemic, one single disease, it affected the respiratory system of the human beings. Specifically, this pandemic, it affected the respiratory tract. Then, you ask the people who suffered greatly, because there were people who were having the mild attack of the COVID-19, but there are the people who miserably suffered through this pandemic, and they realized the importance of the oxygen. Just one single substance I'm talking about, one single ni'mah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has flooded this planet with this oxygen which is our need so we cannot so Allah is al ghani self-sufficient however position and, and possessions of dunya we may, we may have we may possess but still we are dependent beings we cannot survive of our own Allah al ghani is the one who doesn't need anything there is nothing like unto him Yet, he is still all-seeing and all-listening. There is nothing like unto him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-ghani. Whose ghina knows no bounds. Whose self-sufficiency knows no bounds, no limits. We have in dunya, there are what we call the richest men in the world. Every country has a list of richest people, richest, richest men top 50 richest men in the, in the country, then top richest men in the world. So we have these lists. 
But this richness is in one single aspect that is worldly possession. It's not necessary that a person who is rich in worldly possession may be also rich in his, in his mental capability. So Allah is Al-Ghani. He is self-sufficient. And his self-sufficiency knows no bounds. The one meaning of Al-Ghani or Al-Ghina is to be self-sufficient and which is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no one who can claim to be self-sufficient in its absolute meaning. Allah alone can claim to be self-sufficient in its absolute meaning. No other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can claim to be Al-Ghani. Because all our ghina, all our richness, all whatever we possess in, in this world, it's all given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Gifted to us as a means of test. As a means of test, Allah has given these things to us. So Al-Ghani is the one who is self-sufficient, who doesn't depend on others. In any case, in any way, at any point of time, we depend on others in, through so many ways, at different points of time. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Ghani. So his ghina is unlimited ghina. His richness is unlimited richness. His self-sufficiency is unlimited self-sufficiency that he requires none. He needs none of us. Yet we need him. He does not depend on anyone, but we all depend on him, on his will. That is Al-Ghani. The first meaning of Al-Ghina or Al-Ghani is to be self-sufficient. And then the another meaning of Al-Ghani is independent. So, so the first meaning is self-sufficient and independent. And the second, to be free from needs and wants. To be free from needs and wants. Usually our concept of ghina, our concept of richness is when we have tremendous amount of the wealth, when we have full treasures with us, we think that a person is ghani. That's not ghani. As I said before, this ghina or this richness is one single aspect. Well, as our needs are diverse, our needs are multiple. Where we are dependent. There is a story of a king who happened to be very rich. One day he had a thought. A thought struck his mind that I should see the amount of the wealth in the treasury. So that let me see if it is sufficient for my upcoming, gener upcoming five generations or six generations. If there happens any wrong, if there appears any wrong thing, so do I possess enough or sufficient amount of the wealth that won't only suffice for me, even it will suffice my family as well, my progeny and my posterity. So he went to see the treasury and there was a huge door having two keys. The lock had two keys. One with the, one with the king and other was with other one was with the in our modern day terminology finance finance minister the one who is in charge of the finance of the treasury so he opened the door and he he got inside when he went inside there were many rooms room within the room room through the room there were many rooms inside in every room he could see the heaps of the gems and pearls the, the heaps of the gold and silver he is crossing to the next one and it is also full of the gold silver, gems, pearls then he goes to the next one this way he went to the deep into the treasury just before the king the finance minister also had the same thought let me check what, what amount of how much wealth we possess in our treasury? If there is any drought or if there is any famine, so are we able to coup the any untoward situation? So he wanted to have the stock of the situation. However, when he left, just he had a th after thought, did he lock the door of the treasury or not? So he returned back. What he finds, the door is open. So he thought that it is he who left the door open. So he closed the door, he locked it down. When king returned back from the different rooms, he reached back to the door, it was closed. 
but there were the huge doors. Now, who will listen to him? He's crying aloud, but nobody is listening. One day passed, two day passed, three day passed. He's crying now. He exhausted all his energy, but nobody is listening to him. He's locked inside the treasury. Ultimately, when many days passed by, and he realized that he could not survive anymore. He is now watching the heaps of gold, heaps of silver. But he cannot take it. He cannot consume it. He cannot eat it up. It's not the food. It is a solid metal. Which is though expensive and rich. It's costly metal. But it cannot provide him one single time of food. It cannot provide him one single meal. So the ulama mentioned, it's just a hikaya, just a story to make us realize how much dependent we are upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if in one aspect we are immensely rich, tremendously rich, but the richness doesn't mean in one single aspect. The true richness is when we are rich in all aspects of life. When king realized that he's now having the last moments in his life, in his life what he did, he just cut his way in here and the blood, it, 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 starts, it started bleeding. So, with this blood, he wrote on the wall, the treasure which I thought that would be sufficient for my five, six generations could not provide one single meal to me. The treasure which I thought that it will be suffice, it will be sufficient for me and for my six, seven generations could not give me one time food. So we are dependent. We should not be misled. We should not be misled by the idea that we are having. In one aspect, we are the rich people. And what is richness? How do we define the richness? Usually, our definition of richness is to have tremendous amount of wealth. But according to Islam, the, this is not the true richness. The richness is that a person realize his dependence on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's true richness on the part of the servants. When, a, when Allah bless a person to have this feeling and, re, and realization that I do depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all my aspects. I owe nothing of my own. I possess nothing of my own. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who facilitated all these things to me for a specific period of time and one, when that specific period of time arrives it will be all taken away from me. So I am just caretaker of this wealth. I am caretaker of what Allah has blessed me with. And then Allah, Allah is going to ask me about it. I am responsible and accountable for all what I possess, what I owe in this dunya. Allah will ask us definitely. كُلُّكُمْ رَاعِمْ وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْعُولْ عَنْ رَعِيَتِهِ Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam With every one of you is ra'i, is, is responsible, and every one of you is accountable about his, about his subordinates, about his subservients. Subhanallah wa hamdihi, subhanak Allah wa hamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atuhu ilayk. Subhanallah rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun, wa salamun ala al-mursaleen, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.